Hey, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, back again with the open queue Iron Man. Last game, we got our easy ass fair win. Now we're off to the final DPS for me to play, which is Torbjorn. I'll see you when we find a game so I can show them off. Alright, looks like we found a game. On Junker Town of all maps, we got Tiger again. Gold one, the Diamond three. What the fuck? What a team are we playing, man? Have there been range? I haven't actually looked at the range in like almost any other game. Have the ranges been like that? Yeah, for Torb skins, Magna is my favorite. Surf and Splash is a cool one, and then Rust Clad is an old, old event only skin. I think this one was 2017. It doesn't look particularly amazing, like the turret looks super bland because it's an early event skin. But it is an event skin, and the turret has like a little glowing X on it, and the Torbjorn himself has like a glowing belly and shit. And otherwise is like a really blending in type of green, makes it really easy to hide in bushes and stuff. Hey Tiger, you're welcome back. One more round. <laughs> If, oh if I win with Torp here, then I finish the whole DPS roster. He's the last character I need. I'm just trying to do my weekly, man. <laughs> oh, I don't even did. I never looked at this once. I kind of, I always forget that they added them, and then people just talk about it. I'm like, oh yeah, like weekly challengers for credits Their or thing, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just survived a whole comp match uh, against uh, four tanks and one healer. Oh yeah. <laughs> we just had a, a lever on the enemy team in my team. last game. <laughs> I was gonna throw. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a headache. I do like that game against me on, uh, what should we call it? That was personal. That was <laughs> personal. Uh, one of those was. I mean, you know which one. And it wasn't helping too because our tank that match was uh -huh. yelling at us saying that we weren't uh we weren't not healing enough or whatever. Like, we weren't like healing enough or something. Uh, I'm like, dude, you're literally like knuckle deep. In there. <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Yeah. I felt a little bad for you and no one ever really looked at me other than uh there was like one person on your team that would fight me and everyone else just completely ignored yeah. my presence. I no, because they, uh, after the first round, they asked what happened, and I was like, uh -huh. mashing thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what else do you think happened in that? Yeah. My teammates were good, that, like, we, we got rolled for a bit, and then they were like, they figured out the right heroes to pick. Like, Ram and Ryan were really good swaps. At the right times. That Nanid soldier's behind. That soldier was in that game too, like yep. I think, or he just randomly went soldier or whatever, in the middle of everything. Speaking of soldier, this one... <laughs> They're kind of getting a disgusting amount of value here, if I don't understand. Like they should just be oh, done yeah, or not. Wait, that is the soldier that was on my team. Yeah, I recognize the name. He was the one that was uh, him and another... We're just flaming. Uh, one was like flaming us. Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of shit. Like, I just noticed him go DPS and he became way easier to kill, and that's all I, that's the only reason I remember his name. <laughs> but to be fair, I haven't managed to do it this round. I guess Arissa has that. He's on one! I can't believe he got out of that. Alright, big fucking flank ult, holy. Discord on him. Soldier. Oh, one. He is doing some decent flanking and shit though, like, I wasn't able to kill him yet, he's yeah, still back he, there. he low stay back. Yeah, it just doesn't work on circuit, that's the thing. Like that map, there is no flank roots on circuit, so you're just playing like Widow Sight lines on a character with damage fall off. Yeah, that right there, those right clicks, that's what Torb's all about. If the tanks are ever super close to you, do you have your E press especially? You just combo that with your, your other there. thing that uh, spreads the DPS passive, you turret. Let me fucking kick his ass. Bitch! 
Oh, I was gonna hammer him, but my turret got the kill. I'm lucky. But you can see, like, I'm just not dying, doing absurd amounts of damage. I've had my ult for a bit, and I just haven't popped it, which is kind of on me. I do just have the objectively better tank comp here. Like, Mega Ryan does just be Mega Risa, unless the Ryan's really bad. As long as the Ryan shields off the Mega, like, you just get, like, three different health bars. I'm just gonna use it. I've been holding this way too long. Use the E-Press to get out. And now that we're out, we can just pressure him pretty freely. Ryan's stuck in a weird spot, but our Mauka walked in on that for some reason. But yeah. Would help me a little if I placed my shots better. Would also help me if we actually had, like, a front line here to speak of. You'd say this is, this is just what you do on Torb. You do this every game, you get... The good damage, good ults, high survivability. But generally just a pretty disgusting hero. And when you can get off some right clicks, it's it's really nasty. But they're playing really good, they, like, uh, on offense it's a bit more rough. It's harder to contest angles like that when the soldier's holding him. But generally people don't play soldier. soldier behind. <laughs> nice. Oh fuck! Don't the shit out of me. Not their brig, but I got slept while reloading. Do you still want to run off? You want like something else? You're like an Ana. Um, well, the problem is against their team. Like, if Ryan just blocks it, then Ana doesn't get any value. But if you believe you can throw an anti around the run, then it'll be big value. I absolutely can. All right, all right. And yeah, once we hit one fat NT, then our Mogu can just walk on him for free. The Ram swap is big. I mean, Ryan is still definitively better than Ram here. For that exact duo matchup. I mean, that's out there. Let's do that. I have a turret that kind of like, spams out main for like a tiny bit of damage or whatever. Bash no turret for him. Kinda of toss there, I'm not gonna lie. A swap off of Mog is brutal. We will be better on defense anyway, like even with our given team comp. But all we had to do is mirror the Ryan and we should have won. But I'm not gonna tell people how to play the video game. So I really want the win, but I don't particularly need to win this one. So I'm just gonna keep going. Nice. Yeah. Swap from Kiri to Moira, I guess to flank their honor or something. I don't really know. Uh, I guess Kiri wasn't really helpful because they never really got any value off of like antis or anything. So whatever. We should be fine, we just gotta lock in a little bit. The the match range got me real interested though. Like I wonder if who's who in this, you know, who's the gold one, who's the diamond three. I'm shockingly neither of them at the moment. It's all those losses we took with the early DPS. And we might take a few more once we get a life weaver and then mercy, but once those two are out of the way, the rest of the, the support should be somewhat easy. And as soon as I get to tanks, I mean the game will play itself. That'll be really easy. Yeah. Hog Ryan's a good combo. Do you play tank? I feel like I've only seen you on support. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ryan's not too hard. What a rough, what a rough combo game. Ah. Uh, I did have it real bad early on when I because I don't know if you know the challenge I'm doing where it's like one win per here or whatever. But it took me nineteen games to get a win on Genji. And let me tell you, that was not fun. 
<laughs> That's so many fun individuals while doing that part of the challenge. Yeah. So if I'm on right here, it's an easy pin off the map for every user we're going. Just throw that Cerrito in main. Oh my god! That Bastion just melts oh, everything. Right yeah, you gotta bait his turret for him. Which can be rough to do to be fair. Can't blame this guy, especially if he hasn't played Ryan. I was left clicking assuming they'd chase our Ryan, but I guess our hog was too <laughs> interesting one to agree. Yeah, I've gotta dodge the sleep, I guess. But yeah, sometimes you lose them. I just I don't know what more I could have really been doing here. And I did get solid value on. Like, we have no deaths, we have high damage, we've been annoying him quite a lot. A lot of those aren't, well I guess not a lot of those are finals, we have four finals. But they don't have a lot of deaths in general, four finals is half of their deaths. But like, I have been majorly contributing. Yeah. Maybe that guy was gonna chase me, but I also had the attempt to help with Kart there. Unfortunate. Not much you can do. But you're standing in TM too much. It's not even that. It was that simple. That's an easy ass fix. It's just that we're not dealing with anything at all in any way. But I don't have the heart to tell these people that. Man. Pipes. <laughs> Damn, dude, this is one of my two deaths in 4k for everyone to see. Unlucky. But yeah, we'll see you in the next game of Torb. I'm kind of shocked that there is one. And like I said, I, I played Torb for an entire season. He's one of the few characters I have a lot of open queue experience with. We go to season 6? Yep, season 6 Torb only. 53% win, top 200 or whatever. Just the whole way through. Oh, that Helix guy is the same guy with stream mode on. Wonder why he's keeping that icon if he doesn't want people to know. Hey, yeah, get Swifties here. That guy's been pretty good in past open key seasons. I don't know how lucky he is now. I think I saw him a few games back, but I just didn't comment about it. And then we've seen the Hulk and Scarlet Witch today. I don't remember what they were doing. And then Chloe gets to see where I'm at in my journey. Off to support. I feel like I, I can give him the updates. That means I've been winning, man. That's a good Yo. thing. That's a positive. That means I've won on every other one except Torb. Did like Farrah last game or two games ago. Invite me again. What? Jeez. I did just kind of completely ignore and talk over our Mauga just because Chloe has been there for a lot of my games. Very supportive character in the Iron Man arc. Sorry, the spot's actually kind of ass. Let's move it over there. Gotta watch the hook. The way too grouped over there. Someone was gonna get to hook. Easy. Like more. Good starting pick. Good finish up by our, uh, our Mauga there. Mercy dead. Ten brig. She should have joined. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> well, you get, it her problem now. Are y'all stacked? No, we gave her an yeah. invite. She declined it. We were with her last game. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I love when that shit happens.
If you're like, nah, I don't want to play with you, especially if you like avoid you. Yeah, take the loss, then. And then you smoke him. It's like, oh, I get fucked on. You fucking thought you were them. Yeah. That was a good feeling. Hopefully we do actually win this one, because it also feels awful when you say all this shit and then you lose. Which is a very common trend, because you start getting overconfident and then start playing worse because you're overconfident. It's been so easy up to that point. And then they lock in and you lock out. Just generally not the greatest. The hammer swap there was uh, instinctual. As for what has built up that instinct for me, that's a whole nother question that I will not be answering at this time. Now. But yeah. We will you right there. Oh. Hey. If I lose another ult today, I'm 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 installing. I'm at like a twenty on my counter. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah, we demac the diva. It's still winnable. I'm donating it. I was shocked. There's a baby diva there. But I don't think we're going there. Gotta evacuate. I guess Mac is back if we're gonna make it work. They do have their own diva now, which is gonna be a bit of a problem. The mercy swap design, which is good value. Oh, there's C9ing. They're on the payload. The Torb's there with it. <laughs> no, I'm the, the Torb. Yeah. <laughs> I, Yo, my bad, my bad. <laughs> it's just Zara there, but she's probably regen by this point. Okay. Uh, right is right is my uh, my E press ran out. I ran into it and she had all her cooldowns. Nice. Oh shit, 12 HP. <laughs> the sleep there kill, dude. Let's go. Sleep there kills are rare. I guess they're on a lived on 12 against the, uh, uh, the Zyre. I guess she didn't get a heal in time. Making some bold assumptions here. Yeah, let's help with the D.Va. Alright then. I'm gonna back up. I'm just gonna spam it for damage. Doesn't matter if I charge through Zara as long as I don't die. Uh oh. I baited that out. Nice. Like, I don't know if you saw that that back and forth movement. It made it seem like I didn't see him and I was just walking one way. And then, uh, just walked the other way right when I knew he took. Shocker. Worked. Uh -oh. Let's throw a turret down in main. No problem with the pressure at least, or if it doesn't okay, pressure okay, okay, okay. it, get the damage. No way. <laughs> That's unreal. Every time I go for it, bro. I mean, maybe don't do it in front of the hogs, man. Stop. That's literally the only character that can stop you other than Ana, I guess. Have you been slept out of him, too? Or are you just getting hooked every time? I'm a little curious, you know. Okay, that's my fault. Yeah, this guy's just inting now. It's one ult in there. I'm gonna go to Zara. Yeah, I got staggered there. Not really sure how we could even play this super differently. I mean, it'd be nice to have a frontline tank of some kind, but we had Melga just now, and it wasn't enough, because Diva DM'd him and Zara bubbled it. Mainly because we're getting split and then we're answering, but I don't know how to, like, get people to stop doing that. Like, if I knew how to solve that, everyone would be good at this game. <laughs> Sometimes I ain't as well, but this guy is he's locked in, he's, he's on the cycle. Oh? Crazy that that got someone, but I guess... Zara wasn't in range. Okay, got this bug up. And there's Zara. 
Nice. Just moving the turret because I saw it was alive somewhere. And generally, right, I don't like waking it. Just having it up. Got this. Just Come get Billy. Yes, sir. Just watch the hooks. As long as we play around their hooks, we do just insta win. Like, I, I'll do more passive damage than their hog. He gets more active hooks and kills that way. Oh. That was a good one. Into that corner right there. A lot of abilities. Yeah. This is true. Whew. Arana barely lives, but it just seems like a stagger type of live, you know? It did just look like she was gonna get hard stagger there. Good damage on the hog there. That's just what the left looks. Wizards no. are again. He's just, this is just inting. We might, we might need to cover tank in this. We do have Vague come here with his arrow. Oh my god, I love D.Va. It's so much counterplay to what the fuck she just did to me there. Big Anthony. I wanted to get a hammer kill. I know it's pretty when we were, you know, in trying times or whatever, but... You can't blame me, man. Hammer kill is safe. It didn't impact the fight at all. It was a safe attempt at a hammer kill. No possible downside. They swap Melga instead of uh, Hog. Which is interesting actually, because into our comp that's not particularly useful. I guess he could burst down our uh, Zar. Can't really help with a D.Va, but can 100% burst down our Zar. No, I never mind, they have both, they have no D.Va. Yeah, actually, means we're at advantage. As long as our diva doesn't get hooked. DM just beat not having DM after all. First we're just gonna get the Zen. We just pressure the rest of them out with some free damage. Then we can chase a little while we have our extra health and all that. You can throw a turret back there, I think? I don't know if that's actually a good spot, because they just reworked this map. Off on the right here is always pretty big. Because when they start pushing the bridge, it starts shooting them. And they will eventually be pushing the bridge. It's just a given. But you can see there, they were mega good to shoot it for like 3 extra seconds. They just wouldn't have spent shooting there. And then we almost have a turret back again. We can just put it right back there right away. I was thinking, why is this guy dead first to refight? They're gonna blame it on not having a third tank if they just blame it all. Hog flanking back flying. Team dead. Grab. Yeah, not much you can do. I'm just used to playing with a lot of tanks, and I'm not on tank. That's another problem you can run to open queue when characters are good, but people haven't played with them. That's why even if they add like a new DPS that's cracked in open, unless they're like insane, like really insane, it's gonna be rough. Genuinely, there's not gonna be an easy, uh, easy way to work around that. Because they're not used to it. There's not too many Torbs in open queue. People aren't too used to that. You know, we had like a Diva Zar. It's a weird ass comp. It's a winnable comp. It's a solid comp, but it is a weird comp. And because it's uncommon, that's obviously a bit of a problem. Let's see, yeah. The characters we won on our first game in. Kree, we had a disconnect. Fair, we had a disconnect, but we were dominating. Uh, May, I guess we won our first one. There was a sweat fest. Hanzo I did on like 300 ping, echo similar story.
been Reaper and Junk River pretty quick as well. And everything else has been a real struggle, shockingly. Even Bash in 20% is not something I would have expected before doing this challenge, but I do just forget about Mauga, like I keep mentioning. But yeah, overall when we finish Tor, we'll be at exactly 21, because there's 20 DPS characters. Uh, and then... I just want to count the rest of the characters. I think it's a little bit more than 20 for the rest of the roster, let's see. That's 6, 12, and then that's another 10. So there's 22 left, so we're not exactly halfway. After we do our first support character, we'll be halfway. But when we finish Torb, it'll feel like I'm halfway, because there are just so many DPS in comparison to the other roles. But, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys when we find the next game. Alright, looks like we found a game. Wasn't a particularly slow queue. We're off to Ilias. We're up against that three stack we just had in our team. This will be interesting. Hopefully we roll well. The thing is stacking an open queue is extremely strong. Because you can just guaranteed have like a solid roster. I mean like I mentioned a few games back, just having like a a, a Ryan Zar Moira is almost always just the base of a winning comp. You can kind of just fill in whatever those last two slots as you want. Uh, unless the enemy team has a Mauga. Then you have to have a Mauga or like specifically be locked in and like bubbling and hooking or DMing him at all the right times. But yeah. Should be interesting. Hopefully, Hulka continues his, his feeding spree that he was on last game. Because I just want to be done with this and go to bed. And, you know, I started the Torb thing at like 3 in the morning and it's almost 4. And that is rather unfortunate. Yeah. They do the Rhinezar Mag, which is just an inherently strong comp that we just don't have. But. This is one of Mago's worst maps because there's so much cover to be able to play. But the Rhine does help with that a lot. Especially the Rhine Zar, it's a really strong duo. As we all know. But yeah, new armor changes made it so despite Rhine doing 300 on Finn, you saw Torb live there on 2 health because he can just do that on full health. Which is a little ridiculous, because then you can press E to live a swing past this uh, past the pin. Which is wild, because Reaper just gets one shot, May just gets one shot, but Thor, because he has like 50 armored health, actually narrowly survives a run pin, which is a little dumb. I don't think it should do that. <laughs> Feels like wrong that it does. Yeah. Unfortunate, their Mauga isn't like hard frontlining, they're playing behind the run. Which is proper. Like I said, I don't I don't think Hulk is a bad player. I think he's not used to playing with a Torb on his team, which is fair enough. It's an uncommon pick. When you are that Torb, it makes things a little rough. Gotta be a Mauga right? Off the map I go. It's not jumping off there it gives Ryan possible ult charge that he just doesn't need to get. And we do pull that together after that. The Ana pick actually just isn't that great because Ryan shields and then even if the shield doesn't block antis, Ana can just no uh, sorry, not Ana, but their Zara can just bubble them. Oh, there I go. So look there, that is fun. Now we'll go ult in our spawn door. And we're just getting held. Not much to say about that. Like, in order to beat this, we would need Mauga run, but I just, just don't feel like asking for it. I feel like it's really obvious to anyone who plays this game, if you want to win, you just go Mauga. Like, he does solo the entire game, regardless of anything. On this map, it could be neat, though, if we have a Hog player. Because this is the one map where Hog can just do everything. Because his environmentals are kind of unbeatable.
He's just following along with the turrets. He's the, he's the little turret, he's the fourth one in line. <laughs> That's a funny interaction. The Widow is just giving up. The Widow is useless on this. is actually the worst map to the Widow on. Where they were rotating, I don't know. Algo Hog's decent though. Like, especially if we can break down the Rhine, but on this map we don't have to. The turret was kind of just to bait and see what they had. They lost the Rhine though, which means we actually, if we have the better Mavic player, which can't be that hard, then we'll win. I'm not playing safe enough. Right, there's the Merga. It's going wait. Like, the second they lost this Rhine, look how much deeper their Merga's going. That's what I was dealing with last game. Yeah. Problem is, if we don't get to point, we don't, like, hook them off. It's just rough. Like just getting stuck in this hallway is just inherently bad unless we have a really well timed now get E press compared to others. It has to be like distinguished to like considerably better. Can I make it to my guy? I can. I know my team's locked in here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, we're cooking. Nice. That's the Mega Hero beating their Mega Hero to a pulp. And all it took was two support ults, which actually, for a Mega ult, that's not an awful exchange. I think they popped Cold too, or something. Problem is, they were gonna pop Primal, and they didn't. So now they have that for this next fight. And, like, it's either me or Ana that's gonna get Primal. You just don't have a reason to go for anyone else. Yeah. There's their Mega Inting yet again. Keep an eye out for that one soon flying. Damn, I got that Moira low. If I aimed the second shot better, she would have been dead for it. Okay. Now he can't really Primal. I guess he can, but he shouldn't have. No, he didn't Primal. Oh shit. Okay, there I go. Huh? Monkey, yo. I, I have no clue what language that guy just spoke. But I don't speak it. We got the Moira, which is kinda big, but then their Mega got her a hug, which is kinda big for them. Yeah, there's a good primal by him off the nano. They gave him not to Primal when he got Nana, I thought I saw him do it, and I was just wrong. Why is our QQ peeking up? It's crazy for that one. Ah, oh, it was worth it. We even here. Probably needs to hook him back in to actually get value from the ult, but he doesn't. I guess they were bubbling, to be fair. We got the Moira, we're, we're up one. Oh. Our Mega died to their Mega, we lose the fight probably, especially with a native to carry. That charge shouldn't be there, it's way too far for him. But luckily Kitsune was still up, and Kitsune is ridiculous, and you can just do whatever the fuck I just did with that. They're backing for some reason, which is nice for us. Let's see that. That'll be an annoying trade spot unless they happen to go high ground, that'll be easy to deal with. Okay, there goes our home. I don't think they know that it, they trapped their Mega. I don't think they need to know because they just won the fight. That's good cage. Yeah, solid all around. Unfortunate that we lost though, but it was pretty close. You'll enjoy that one, and I'll see you in the next one. We'll do a lot more of the same. Bye bye. Alright,
Looks like we found another one. And we get tree back in this one. Young coconut with the tour profile pick. Hopefully he doesn't lock him for me. Luckily he doesn't. And yeah, we got Chloe again. We're still stuck on tour, yeah. Rhinezar, that's a classic. Rhinezar tour is a good trio, unironically. Even if they get like a mug or something, we got enough barriers and stuff in the way that we can maybe make do. Just really depends on what the rest of their team is. Like, if they're like Rhinezar Mauga, I'm kind of just way weaker than Mauga, guaranteed. But we can still win. Uh, the Life Weaver makes it really rough. And if Young Coconut doesn't do support here and we're so with your Life Weaver, which is what's happening, then it's super rough. But luckily, our Rhine Satan spawn just for that occasion. Yeah. Right now, we're stuck with this whack ass comp. Which is just not great. I'm assuming he was a Torb player and I took his here. But like, I'm just playing Torb right now, man. Nah, I don't know what he wants from me. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. Do a Widow. They really can pressure a little, but they also have Diva Ram, which is just an inherent advantage over the rest of our team. The Mac to Spang. The uh, pedal for that turret's a really interesting play, but it does help us kill the Echo because she didn't know the turret was there. Because it wasn't shooting anyone, which is actually, that's really interesting. I haven't played with enough life we were to even think about that combo actually doing things and existing. That is actually pretty neat. Yeah. I got bubbled because she expected someone to be there, but nobody was there. Oh dang, the pedal was lit. I trusted my life we with my turret's life. And it's gone now. It's all his fault. They yeah, were still playing with busted Alari Pylon that takes like forever to kill and heals more than it ever has before. Which is nice. In this scenario, because we we're kind of relying on her for healing most things. Diva D Mac, that's pretty big. You know, I just tried swapping my hammer about four times and it didn't happen once. Rams won. Okay, now I can swap to my hammer, but the whole last like three minutes I've been unable. But, like, look at how fast that, that pylon healed everyone back up. It's ridiculous. All that while Alari herself can do good damage and also heal people for burst heals on top of all that. But to be fair, they're kind of, What the fuck are they doing, man? This is just not even open key. I mean, I've been able to show off how Torben Open Key normally works, luckily. Like on the uh, Junker Town, I got a solid game in. Where we just had worse tanks, but I was still able to get a lot of value. But uh, what are they. What? What is Wid <laughs> Widow Venture Echo so The Quad DPS Mercy Solo Heal. It's just goofy. There's, there's no two ways around it. It's just goofy. Yeah, I think we do this. Oh. I was say, because it'll let us know when someone's coming that way, but then Echo was actually there, and I just wasn't looking for her. See, I just was not even looking her direction. That's my fault completely. Hopefully my team's able to hold on, but considering we actually have two supports and a tank. I mean, I guess they do too. They're mirroring the 1-2-2 two, two with Zara as a main tank, but... Our Zara's good. It's Chloe. We all know Chloe. I didn't throw that turret as far as I'd hoped. I can't believe there's ours alive. That's unfortunate. Hopefully our soldier doesn't get picked, but he might, especially because he just wasted healing station. Trying to get back to him as fast as possible. Uh, our Zara's gonna have to be the one to touch, or life would be probably. That's our can make it, right? No. I should cannot. Yeah. That's why you do the, the come over time. Because their echo didn't see me place it there. Uh, like, generally on Torum, I, I, you know, back when I was worse the game, I would also just 
hold left click as soon as I got ult and use it all at once, but it's actually better to do it in slower bursts because you can deny more valuable space that way. Because if you use it all at once, it just denies one area. If you use it slowly over time, you deny smaller bits of larger areas, like you can just deny important things, like you put one splooge there and, they, and that covers the entire window and they can't really push through it. Okay, I'm going for too many skill shots while having my arms on my armrest. That's how I'm playing Torb right now, I'm not locked in at all. Probably should lock in a little, it wouldn't hurt. It is a really good pick for the record to begin. So our Lari is our lifeline. But I guess we got their heals too, so that's okay, because that was a fat grab from Chloe there. Beautiful. Let's see if this will get some people. Maybe they just don't see that turn and it gets some free damage. You never know. Okay, they saw it. We're gonna push our Weaver. Not yet. But they might soon. That pylon's in a bit of a risky spot. We'll see what we can do with that. Um, yeah. Okay, they grab their Zar and just don't really have too much to save her. Tree just isn't enough. Tree is like a pre-fight ability. Get the pop tree, use it to get over health, and then use that over health to make plays. You can't do other ways. Okay, got him out of Torb form. We might be able to get a recontest if we're lucky here. Never mind. I got farmed. I have most of why we're not getting a recontest there, because I didn't back up enough. My Zarya needed to do it, and I was dumb. I just watched you know, the one other guy in two games, and now I'm doing it. Gotta make up for it. <laughs> yeah. We've lost like two or three fights, and that's been enough for them to cap two entire points. Isn't that just fun? We have ult here, I'm not sure if it's worth holding for the combo with Zara to be honest, because we've been getting decent value without the combo. Just fine. Good shots on the Mercy there. You can see like right here, the Zarya doesn't expect that stair to have come on it. And just look at how much more space in more ways we could deny it. Now they have to be like careful where they walk if they want to go in, because otherwise they die up the Zarya. The soldiers backed up into that because it wasn't there a second ago. Like people generally when you pop Torbolt, they just look for the initial thing and then they're like, okay, just don't go there. But then if that initial thing isn't the only thing, you can get so many more people with it. Like it's just, it's mainly psychological, but it also does genuinely just take up more time and space, which is exactly what you want out of an ult. More space for longer time. See, I already started push two for you there. That's not really anyone else's fault. And I would say our soldier's too deep, but like, we need someone to front line. Right, they've got their pylon, but I also got pulled away from point. I was gonna go touch. Don't have any, like, input display to show that off. Yeah. They, they turned it around with Mercy Lucia. That's just kinda sad. But that is the power of Echo. An uncontested Echo. Maybe our uh, Larry will be able to get him this time. But overall, that I means a pretty solid, even game so far. Until one of them gets bored and just goes back to tanking. But it is interesting, because when they were running two tanks, they were losing. With the second they swapped two more DPS, they started winning. Really makes you think. And I mean, I actually know why that is. It's because Torbjorn... Uh, against DPS is actually worse. He's good against DPS, he's a d solid duelist, if you, you know, play some decent shots you can get good value. But a lot of DPS have quicker, uh, more consistent forms of damage, like, you know, McCree's pistol, you shoot at someone, you just point and click, and this will guarantee you damage. With Torbjorn, I point and click, and that guy could walk left and then it won't hit him. Uh, 
and that makes him inherently worse against other DPS unless your turret's up particularly well. But against tanks, Joyburn can just go to town with right clicks, and he's like small with a lot of health, plus armored health, plus like if he presses E, he has 100 more health, uh, he could be really disgusting, plus the turret applying a small bit of DPS pass to everyone. You know, catching certain supports and stuff out of line, especially Moira's. Like, the amount of times when I was one-tricking uh, toward that one season that I would accidentally kill a Moira it was ridiculous. Like right there, turrets down. The Echo, who I didn't hit really any shots on beyond the first one, was unable to do anything about it. Yeah, I'm trying to pressure the Ash here because no one else really is looking at her. And that's good pressure. I would not be repeating this, but this Ash is built different. Yeah, let's see if we can push up on her. She's backed out already. If we can focus out their Mercy, that's big value. Yeah, even against Squishies, if you feel like you can't hit your shots, which I feel like I wasn't going to hit that echo right there, going for right clicks like that can just be more guaranteed easy value. Especially if they're low like this, sometimes it can be enough. That Ash wasn't low enough that I could do it. She needs to be like about half of the hell she had there. But she was close enough that that ship damage uh, plus our shooting at her and soldier and stuff probably would have been enough to, for me to start right clicking there. Not that you should. You should generally try to get better at aiming those left clicks. And they're not particularly super hard to hit or anything. But yeah, we traded in. It's fine. Unfortunately, the grab was a tiny bit late, otherwise would have had their Zarya there. Okay, then Mercy went for Rez on Lucia, which got their Zarya killed, which is big for us. Yep, same thing here. Look, the Lucia just took half his health bar from that lob I put there at the end. Like, I've killed Echo a few times, but Alar is the only person on our team that can consistently kill an Echo. Nobody else has the ability to do that. Just not in their kit. I guess Sarya could, depending. Yeah. Better this time. Honestly? Okay. If we'd, if we'd only lost Life Weaver, that wouldn't have been too bad of a trade, but now it kind of is. Too bad of a trade to be able to recover. Wow, they've done three. We did make it out. We're kind of chilling. Well, here's the thing in open, if you're not doing a stupid challenge like this or something, you're like, damn, this echo's pissing me off. You at any point can just swap the, like, McCree or Widow or whatever. There's nothing stopping you outside of, like, not wanting to disappoint your team. Are we going right side? Okay. I feel like we can just walk on that Lucio there. Yeah, I couldn't. I was right about that. Sorry, super low. I forced Valk with it. Well, the one's gone now, which is actually really unfortunate. But we still should have a decent chance of winning this fight here. We don't have any particular advantages. We lost our Zarya because their Echo peaked for a literal frame, and that got our supports to turn off of her. Now we get our run. And I can't particularly do that too, too well. You barely make it out. The fuck is that goofy ass echo voice line there? I like how from her perspective it just sounds completely normal. But it, like, when she was saying that just now, it sounded like she had like a stuffed nose or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's kind of goofy. Yeah, echo on the right side. We saw a from there. Are we going right side? What are we doing? That is a scuffed ass play. And we have both our support ults here. We should be able to win this next fight as long as we don't feed. Early E press for me was actually really stupid. I wish I had to have that right now, but I was dumb enough to waste it like that. 
big. We got their tank. It's a big pick. And beat out for free. Lucy is dead for it. My soldier is locked in on the Echo. That's a big one. And now we just do three on, because having them not recontest is bigger than any kill we could possibly be getting here. The sorry, is pretty good pressure up there, especially with the charge he probably has. But yeah, looking decent. This game is pretty even overall. I'm pretty sure this is about the same time they had going into this point. And we're kind of figuring out the matchup a bit more. We're pinging Echo a bit more. We're more aware of her presence. And Mercy's now one in Valking. And whenever the soldier gets back, I can ult. Damn, I didn't think they'd still be able to get our Zara there. I also, by shooting your old slower, you can avoid stacking it like I did at the end there. You can put like two things of lava in the same location. Yeah. Not bad. That's like an Echo Ult to win a fight plus a Grove. Can't be mad with that. The Echo should be out of Echo Ult now. Now we can push up for free. Doing some free damage. Aim a little bit higher so I hit heads and not bodies. Look at that. Boom. Instant headshot reward for aiming that tiny bit higher. Even more headshot reward. Notice how I'm like not dragging my aim up and down on Torb much. You basically just go left to right. Because your pellets will always arc the exact same and most characters have head or body hitboxes around the same area. That was a big Lurial. Bigger than anything Blazer could be done. I don't know, so that was some good movement from the soldier. I just can't hit that fucker. Whenever I do, because I'm aiming at the right head level, instant headshots. No real effort on my part, just instant headshots. Their echo is on it when it comes to destroying these turrets, though. Unfortunate grab from us. Didn't really do anything. You see you have Did the echo go. Just gotta be around here somewhere. Got her, and then we got the Zarn. They res the Zarn, we didn't contest it. We did get the Mercy for that, which is pretty big value. That is their main heal. Oh. Actually a good pull. Got that uh, soldier killed or whatever. You can see my turret that I just arbitrarily threw down there. That's the power of a turret right there. It's literally soloed the Lucio that everyone else was struggling to kill right there. But yeah. Decent stuff all around. Like, this game is just pretty close, pretty evenly matched. I do feel like I'm a big contributing factor. You know? Both of their DPS have, like, 15,000 damage. Um, and I have, like, 15,000 damage. And our Zarya has like 15,000 damage. But our soldier just doesn't. Like, I got 35 Elims split with my Zarya. We're doing some good ship damage. We're poking well. We're doing well. And this soldier just keeps trying to flank and dying to Ek. <laughs> I think he did lock in at the end. I hadn't seen him die. I feel like for all the third, it felt like. Uh, but for a while, he was just kind of feeding. And I think he stopped there. And it's like their soldier's doing the same, to be fair. He's got 15 deaths. If that even is their soldier. Someone's got 15 deaths on their team. I know it's it's padded by res, but, you know. Just looking at our team, like, me and Zar got 5 deaths, and our soldier's got literally double at 10. He's doing something special. Oh, that's fine. Like, he's probably the plat 2 in the lobby. That's okay. It's accounted for by the matchmaker. Just means I have to put in more work able to win harder. And the only real problem with Torb is, is he's a great pick and he can get decent value all the time, but he's not a carry pick, if you know what I mean. Like, he's a good pick to get guaranteed wins, kind of like Moira, where having a Moira is always really good, and you'll be winning because you have one, but he, Moira's not, like, carrying, it's just a really good pick, and that's kind of where Torb falls in. He's just a really solid pick. He's not a winning pick. He's not the the character choice that will win you any games, pretty much. 
Unless your problem is like Tracer, and even then, uh, I, I really don't know. It's Tracer. Yeah, hopefully, at some point, my soldier goes around. Unfortunately, we don't do that, and their echo just blanks for free. We gotta walk soon. Unfortunately. I can try to pressure them in this guy as much as I want. But it just ain't gonna work like that. Nice. Holy shit. I'm making it work. Look at the mercy. Focus mercy. Heal her. Not anymore. We do have a Lariel here. It might not be bad to use it. Yep. That's big. I didn't even call for that or nothing. But. Okay, Mercy's out of Valk now. Zarya's half. I don't have Valk anymore. And that's just big. But like their their Echo just overcommitted and, and fed. And that gave us the entire fight. If Echo literally just stayed and poked in main, we'd guaranteed lose. We did not have any answers. We didn't have anyone flanking. I guess I should have flanked at some point. Our Lari kept getting like spawn camp pretty much. But then Echo got bored and we started kinda of popping for free. I don't know what the fuck our soldier's doing down there, but whatever. What? That pedal was actually so awful <laughs> on our part, man. <laughs> we got stuck. <laughs> Before it even grabbed, me and Zarya got stuck in an awful location. I also didn't realize Zarya was coming with me, to be honest. I thought I would just go kind of like fight the Echo real quick, probably take a route, the Zars would fight each other, our supports would keep up the Zar, and it would all just kind of work out. But I guess not. Hopefully our soldier locks in now. We do need him here. I don't know what he ended up doing that last fight, but it didn't look like it went too well, stat-wise. I guess we only had two fights, so no one's stats really changed. <laughs> yeah. Decent stuff all around. I think that's not a bad push. On this map, pushing first is super rough. So getting it right to the end of first is big. That gives us like two to three fights, and they got one minute, which is two fights. So even if they win both fights, we get the third fight for free, and they have to win it, no matter what. Which is big. That's just big value. Insane value. Yeah. I think what we want to do is we want to put our turret over here. I don't know how valuable this actually ended up being. I feel like having it there so it shoots around that pot or whatever as they walk out in main could be big. I actually haven't played Torb too much on this map so I don't really know. I don't know if this map was even out when I did my Torb run open key stuff. Yeah. They are Zar drops. The Ek has gotta be coming in soon. Just looking for it to be honest. So I think I have to pressure her. I don't think I'm gonna be able to kill their echo, but I need to be able to pressure her. There she is. You can see I kinda got her out of the way. Gotta reload, she knows I'm here. I'm dead. Okay. You can see they're already down like 40 seconds. But we're not gonna get any ults. <laughs> we might even get a third fight if we sag it here. Back up, back up. I keep spamming group up so we keep backing the fuck up because we just don't need to be in right now. Rekka's like gonna jump up here and pressure me in a second. Yep, there she is. Got her ass. That was so free. That is the most standard, fucking obvious echo play they could make, which is exactly why they're doing it. And that's why I played a little bit further back on the ledge. I don't know if you'll manage to see that. That kill is big. That mattered a lot. A new FT about you pull out the hammer. But there you go. That was a hard fought Torb win, but it was a Torb win at the end of the day. Um, I don't know, props to their, their Zara and all that for not swapping. I'm a Torb one trick. 
My bad for taking here. <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> I, I did, it did kind of look like he was a Tormain, and I'm like, did I take his hero? Because he had the icon and everything. But, you know, I don't feel too bad about it. <laughs> but there you have it. We're down to flat, unfortunately. Yeah, not, not anywhere near where we have to be by the end of the season. But in open queue, you can see all the time played for every single hero. Uh, and we have one game one per DPS, and we have three on Reaper, because I played some before doing the challenge. Look at that beautiful stat line right there. One win on every single DPS in open queue. Some of those were a lot more hard fought than others, and weirdly enough, Torb was one of them. I really did not expect to struggle that much on that hero. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed that one, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.